Get ready for a thrilling ride as we unveil the latest buzz from the entertainment industry. The anticipation is building as we dive into this week's blockbuster news. Gareth Edwards' Jurassic World Rebirth has officially wrapped filming, while a new Resident Evil film is on the horizon. Exciting developments are also underway at DC Studios, with Batman villains Bane and Deathstroke getting their own movie treatments. Ridley Scott has begun brainstorming ideas for Gladiator 3, and Spider-Man 4 is in talks to bring on Shang-Chi director Destin Daniel Crane, with Tom Holland set to return. John Leguizamo has revealed that Ice Age 6 is in development, and Kyle Chandler is in talks for the lead role in the upcoming DC series Lanterns. Plus, a Robocop series is in the works at Amazon, and Nobody 2 has wrapped filming. Buckle up as we explore these electrifying updates and more. Exciting news for Jurassic World fans. Filming for the latest installment, Jurassic World Rebirth, has officially wrapped. The announcement came directly from producer Frank Marshall, who shared the celebratory moment on social media, posting a photo of a hat with the caption, That's a wrap. After an intense 106 days of shooting, which began in Thailand on June 13, 2024, and wrapped up in the UK on September 27, 2024, this long-awaited chapter is one step closer to hitting the big screen. Set five years after the explosive events of Jurassic World Dominion, the planet's ecosystem has become increasingly hostile to dinosaurs, forcing them into isolated equatorial environments. These areas mimic the conditions where dinosaurs once thrived. The story follows an elite team led by Scarlett Johansson's character, Zora Bennett, a covert operations expert who embarks on a dangerous mission to retrieve DNA from three of the largest dinosaurs still in existence. Their DNA holds the key to a revolutionary medical breakthrough that could save countless lives. Joining Johansson is an A-list cast including Jonathan Bailey, Mahershala Ali, Rupert Friend, and Manuel Garcia Rulfo, with a script written by Jurassic Park legend David Coop. Directed by Gareth Edwards, Jurassic World Rebirth promises action, adventure, and groundbreaking visual effects. Catch it in theaters on July 2nd, 2025. The Resident Evil franchise simply refuses to stay down. With seven live-action films, numerous animated features, and even a Netflix series under its belt, the horror saga is far from over. Despite the underwhelming performance of 2021's Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City, Sony is not backing down. A new film is already in the works, with rumors swirling that acclaimed horror director Zack Kreger may be at the helm. According to Insider, the Yen Snyder early report suggests filming could kick off as soon as next year, although casting details remain scarce. One tidbit? The search is on for a young black actor in his 20s to take a lead role. With Kreger's knack for horror and tension building, fans are wondering if this fresh perspective could finally deliver the adaptation they've been waiting for. Adding to the excitement, Sudbury, one of the primary filming locations for Welcome to Raccoon City, has secured $2 million Canadian dollars in funding from the Ontario government for a project titled The Umbrella Chronicles. This development strongly hints at a direct sequel, potentially inspired by the 2007 game Resident Evil The Umbrella Chronicles. While Sony hasn't officially announced this follow-up, the pieces seem to be falling into place. With a new creative force like Kreger possibly leading the way, expectations are high. Will this new adaptation finally strike the right balance between fan service and broader appeal? Only time will tell, but horror fans are eagerly awaiting more news. With the Joker sequel just weeks away and the Penguin series debuting on HBO, DC Studios is pushing forward with more villain-centric projects. According to The Hollywood Reporter, a new film featuring iconic villains Bane and Deathstroke is in development. Directed by James Gunn and Peter Safran, the script is being written by Matthew Orton, though no director is attached yet. Bane, created in the 1990s by Chuck Dixon and Graham Nolan, is best known for his role in the Nightfall storyline, where he infamously broke Batman's back. Raised in a prison on a fictional Caribbean island, Bane's blend of physical strength and intellect made him one of Batman's most formidable foes. His character was famously portrayed by Tom Hardy in The Dark Knight Rises. Deathstroke, introduced in 1980 by Marv Wolfman and George Perez, started as a Teen Titans villain before becoming one of DC's top assassins, often clashing with Batman and the Justice League. He appeared in video games and animated series, with Desai Morales playing him in Teen Titans, and Joe Manganiello appearing in Zack Snyder's Justice League. 
Following the success of Todd Phillips' Joker, which grossed $1 billion, and Colin Farrell's acclaimed The Penguin series, the Bane and Deathstroke film is poised to continue DC's strong focus on its villainous characters. Ridley Scott is returning to the Gladiator franchise after 24 years with the highly anticipated Gladiator 2. But the journey may not end there. Scott recently revealed to France's Premier Magazine that he's already brainstorming a potential Gladiator 3. I've lit the fuse, Scott teased. He hinted that the sequel's ending echoes The Godfather, where a character is left asking, now what do I do? Gladiator 2 stars Paul Meskel as Lucius, the grown son of Lucilla, Connie Nielsen, and nephew of Commodus, Joaquin Phoenix. Set in Numidia, where Lucius was sent as a child, the story brings him back to Rome as a gladiator. Denzel Washington plays Macrinus, a powerful Roman figure, and the cast also includes Pedro Pascal and Joseph Quinn. Scott has already hyped Gladiator 2, calling it one of the best things he's ever made. He told Empire that the film opens with probably the biggest action sequence I've ever done, involving Meskel's Lucius facing a rhinoceros in the Colosseum. Using CGI and AI, Scott crafted a lifelike rhino capable of charging at 40 miles per hour. Gladiator 2 is set to hit theaters on November 22nd, with its future and a potential third film dependent on its success. Tom Holland's Spider-Man is set to continue swinging in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, with Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings director Destin Daniel Cretton in early talks to direct Spider-Man 4. Cretton, known for Shang-Chi and other films like Short Term 12 and Just Mercy, has become a prominent figure in the Marvel family. Although he was originally attached to direct Avengers The Kang Dynasty before departing in 2023, he remains involved with Marvel, having co-created the upcoming Wonder Man miniseries and working on a Shang-Chi sequel. However, Spider-Man 4 is now the top priority. The last time fans saw Holland Spider-Man was in 2021's Spider-Man No Way Home, where Doctor Strange's spell erased Peter Parker's identity from everyone's memory, including his friends MJ, Zendaya, and Ned, Jacob Batalon. This concluded the trilogy directed by John Watts, which began with Spider-Man Homecoming in 2017. Although there are no major details about the fourth film yet, this news suggests Holland is committed to reprising his role. Despite his previous reservations about playing Spider-Man as he ages into his 30s, it looks like he'll be suiting up again. The future of Spider-Man remains solid in the MCU, even after the brief dispute between Marvel Studios and Sony Pictures in 2019. John Leguizamo, the voice behind Sid in the Ice Age franchise, has seemingly confirmed that Ice Age 6 is in development. During a recent interview on NPR's podcast, Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me, Leguizamo casually mentioned, they are about to do Ice Age 6, hinting that the franchise is set to continue. However, he did not elaborate on whether he would reprise his role as Sid or what the storyline might entail. This confirmation aligns with earlier reports from a Disney Plus production document regarding a new Ice Age project. While this new installment would technically be the seventh film in the Ice Age universe, it is the sixth mainline entry. Notably, it will be the first not animated by Blue Sky Studios, which Disney shuttered in 2021 due to the pandemic's economic impact. Instead, 20th Century Animation and Bardell Entertainment, who worked on the Ice Age adventures of Buck Wild, will handle production. As for the cast, it's unclear if original voice actors like Ray Romano, Manny, Dennis Leary, Diego, and Queen Latifah, Ellie, will return especially since Buck Wild recast many of the main characters. Fans are now left waiting to see if this new film will follow the spin-off's events or be a direct sequel to Ice Age Collision Course. The news that Kyle Chandler is in talks to play Hal Jordan in the upcoming DC series Lanterns is exciting, especially given Chandler's extensive television background. While he's had a long career in film, Chandler is best known for his TV roles, notably his Emmy-winning performance as Coach Taylor on Friday Night Lights. His work on Netflix's Bloodline also stands out as one of his most powerful. Bloodline showcases Chandler as John Raber, a police officer and the responsible sibling in a dysfunctional Florida family. The series explores dark family dynamics, especially between John and his troubled brother, Danny, Ben Mendelsohn. Chandler portrays John with emotional restraint, while Mendelsohn's portrayal of Danny adds chaos to the family creating a compelling contrast. John's moral complexity deepens as the series progresses, especially in his role as a father. Chandler adeptly portrays a man trying to be a better parent than his own, 
while grappling with his dark side. Bloodline offers a showcase of Chandler's range, balancing vulnerability with intensity. Currently streaming on Netflix in the US, Bloodline stands as a testament to Chandler's ability to elevate any series he's part of. His potential casting in Lanterns is a promising move for DC's new direction. The upcoming Robocop TV series at Amazon is taking shape, with Peter Ako set as the writer, executive producer, and showrunner. James Wan will also serve as an executive producer through his Atomic Monster banner. The series' logline describes a tech conglomerate collaborating with a local police department to introduce a cutting-edge enforcer, a police officer who is part man, part machine. Akko will be joined by Michael Clear and Robert Hackett of Atomic Monster as executive producers, with Danielle Bozum overseeing the project for the studio. The series is being produced by Amazon MGM Studios. This Robocop series has been in early development since Amazon's acquisition of MGM which allows them to leverage MGM's extensive IP library for film and television projects. In addition to Robocop, Amazon is also developing a Legally Blonde prequel and a Poltergeist project. The original Robocop franchise began in 1987, featuring Peter Weller as the iconic half-man, half-machine law enforcement officer. Weller reprised his role in the 1990 sequel, while Robert Burke took over for Robocop 3 in 1993. A reboot starring Joel Kinnaman was released in 2014. Akko's diverse writing credits include Dinosaurs, Dead Like Me, Pushing Daisies, and most recently, the AMC series Moonhaven. Bob Odenkirk, now over 60, continues to prove his action hero credentials with the highly anticipated sequel, Nobody 2. Following the success of the 2021 film, which earned an impressive 83% from critics and 94% from audiences on Rotten Tomatoes, the sequel recently wrapped filming, as announced by director Timo Gianto on his personal Instagram. The film is slated for a theatrical release on August 15, 2025, allowing nearly a year for post-production work, including visual effects enhancements. The original Nobody was written by Derek Kolstad and directed by Ilya Nalshulier. For Nobody 2, Kolstad returns to co-write the script alongside Umer Ali, Aaron Rabin, and Odenkirk himself. Gianto, known for his work on the VHS franchise and the action comedy The Big Four, takes on directing duties for this sequel. The cast has expanded significantly, with Sharon Stone joining as the lead villain and John Ortiz also recently added. Additionally, Colin Hanks, Tom Hanks' son, joined the project earlier this month. With the combination of returning talent and new faces, expectations for Nobody 2 are high as it prepares to build on the success of its predecessor. A fourth Paddington film is officially in the works to celebrate the beloved character's 70th anniversary. Paddington Bear, who first appeared in Michael Bond's 1958 book, A Bear Called Paddington, has become a global sensation, inspiring a successful book series, TV adaptations, and a popular film franchise. The first film, released in 2014, introduced audiences to Paddington as he travels from Peru to London and is taken in by the Brown family. Its sequel, Paddington 2, debuted in 2017, depicting Paddington's wrongful imprisonment for a robbery and the Browns' quest to prove his innocence. Fans can look forward to Paddington in Peru, the third film in the franchise, which is set to hit UK cinemas on November 8, 2024. This installment will see Paddington return to his home country to visit his Aunt Lucy. Additionally, during a keynote speech at the Brand Licensing Europe 2024 convention, Francois Guyenet, CEO of Studio Canal Kids and Family, announced plans for a fourth film and a new TV series expected to be released in 2027 or 2028. In celebration of the upcoming film, star Hugh Bonneville shared plans for a special event across the UK and Ireland, featuring benches adorned with Paddington statues. He encouraged fans, families, and friends to come together and enjoy moments with the marmalade-loving bear. To prepare for Paddington in Peru, the first two films will also be re-released in theaters this October, allowing fans to revisit the adventures of their favorite bear. What are your thoughts on the exciting developments surrounding the upcoming films and series in the Paddington and Robocop franchises? Are you looking forward to the new adventures of Paddington Bear as he marks his 70th anniversary or the fresh take on the iconic Robocop story? We'd love to hear your opinions in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to stay updated on all the latest news and updates from your favorite shows and movies.